Okay, so here I am, stuck in traffic, the natural habitat of any hybrid car. Now, if you were to buy a hybrid, but you wanted to preserve your status as a sexually attractive person, you need to buy a hybrid that is not tall, that is not lame, that's not a geek car. So what options do you have here? Well, you have one now. This is the 2012 Sonata Hybrid. The first thing you're gonna notice is that it looks damn good. One thing that's really impressive is the amount of looks you get in this car. I wasn't really expecting that to happen, but even I was looking at it at the lot. When I was about to like get the car and drive it, I was like, that looks hot. Now, at this point, I would like to present to you how much car you get for the money. So, we start off with HID lights in the front, 17 inch alloys. You get navigation, rear view camera, satellite radio, you get Bluetooth connectivity, you get cruise control, you get all these nice controls on the steering wheel, which is like trip computer display mode, cruise control, as I said, volume control, stuff for the radio, you get the Bluetooth connectivity for the phone. You get heated and cool seats and cooled seats for the driver and the passenger. You get a double outlet, power outlet over here with a USB connectivity for your whatever device you have. And you get a mirror here with a compass inside. You get the auto dimming thing. You get three remote controls for your three garage doors. If you had them. Of course, you get electric mirrors, electric windows all around. You get keyless entry. Somewhere in my pocket, I can't show you right now. But it's cool. And the best feature of all, you get a double sunroof, which is fully electric. Even the cover inside. Yeah, the cover inside. Now the instrument panel over here looks very modern. You have a color LCD display in the middle that shows you all this information. Um, instead of a rev counter, you get a echo guide, which has a blue and a red end and a needle in between that shows you how friendly to the environment you're driving. So if the nail is towards the blue, it means that the polar bear is breathing nice fresh air. If you go towards the red, it means that the polar bear is suffering and you better ease off the gas or something like that. The sound system with the satellite radio also has infinity speakers and it actually sounds very good. The best thing about clowning around in this car and driving a bit sportier is that nobody around you is expecting you to do that. They see hybrid, they think you're a Sunday driver. That's pretty funny. The Sonata's interior is pretty cool. It's well built, it has soft to touch materials on the top of the dashboard. Materials below that are harder, but they're very well put together, so the overall feeling of finish and quality is good. The center console over here has the navigation and multifunctional screen on the top with a all the various controls, like billions of buttons over here. Then like the climate control is right underneath with this very cool Volvo style human that you can press with the arrows and it's pretty cool. Very catchy design. See how nice it sounds? Listen. What sounds better to you, eh? At this point I wanna say Soft to touch materials continue on the door. I'm such a sucker for soft to touch materials, I'm telling you. Because if they're soft to touch. Okay, so in a nutshell, how this hybrid system works you have the 2.4 liter Theta 2 engine in the front, gas engine. You have the six-speed automatic gearbox right here, and right in between you have an electric motor. Battery pack in the back, energy regeneration on the brakes. For as long as you have uh, excess power from the gas motor, 
it's used to recharge the batteries by converting the electric motor into an electric generator. When your batteries are enough and your demand on power is not too big, the car goes on onto EV mode, which means electric mode. So it's capable of accelerating from a full stop up to whatever the speed you're going is. As long as you don't put your foot too deep and you don't demand too much power and the batteries have enough juice, it will keep on going on EV mode. If you push too hard or if the batteries run out, it will start the engine up again. A really cool feature this car does is it can run, it can run the gas engine on idle just to provide power to the motor, the electric motor, and keep you going electrically. That's pretty cool. That's kind of Volt style. You see, put your foot down smoothly, and it's all electric. Now, if you evaluate this car as a hybrid, like a pure hybrid, you might get disappointed because the transitions between all the different systems aren't done as smooth as in some of the competitors. But here are a few things that I've been thinking. It doesn't come with really eco-friendly tires. It has a six-speed automatic transmission, not a CVT. The body kit is better than what you get on the turbo. The car looks sporty and appealing and cool. So maybe I've been doing it all wrong and I need to drive this car as a normal car with 206 horse performance and then think about what the fuel consumption is. Let me try that. Well, that changes things totally. I mean, if you put your foot down and you start driving like a normal car and you really appreciate the performance of the combination of the engines and everything, you will see that this car is a great car. It performs really well, and then once you look at the consumption and you see a figure well below nine, you're gonna say, I love it. I have a car that's like has good performance and it consumes way less than anything else out there with similar performance. How's that for you? Well, the performance is not bad at all. Combined power is 206 horse, and that shows. You get lots of torque from the electric motor anyway, but that's only up until 119 kilometers an hour. Anything above that, the electric system is cut off. Successfully, the suspension does provide ultimate levels of comfort. It is very soft. It smoothens out every possible surface you might be driving on. The cushioning is very quiet, which means there are no bumps and no noises reaching inside the cabin. Now, with the extra weight of the electric motor and the batteries in the back, this has had like the soft suspension plus the extra weight. It does have a negative picture on the handling. Push it in the bends a little bit and you'll, you'll see that it, it feels not too inspiring. Push it above its traction limits and you will find that it understeers kind of progressively but the steering does not provide the feedback to make the drive inspiring. So overall it's safe, it's okay, it's good, it's acceptable, but it's not inspiring. Now I'm on the highway right now doing precisely 100 kilometers an hour on cruise control on a very flat road. It's very windy outside so that probably means I have increased air resistance but I'm doing precisely 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. This just shows that hybrids are perfectly in their natural habitat in the city not outside of it. The reason that happens that your fuel economy might be the same or even worse than what it is in the city is because on the highway there's no there's not much energy you can regenerate you don't press the brakes so often there's no excess power from the gas engine. I'm not using the pedal right now, it's on cruise control. So the best it can do is stay on the gas, low revs, like top gear, and it's doing 8.6. That's about what any other car would be doing on the highway. So the major gain for driving hybrid is 
that you can drive in the HOV lane. For those of you that do not have HOV lanes in other provinces, uh, HOV is high occupancy vehicle lane. Normally I wouldn't be allowed to drive by myself in that lane. I would have to have at least another passenger with me. Because I'm driving a hybrid, I'm allowed to go. And I'm going. I'll tell you one thing. It does feel very cool when you're stopped that the car is off. No idling, no nothing. That alone, like, can make a difference of, I don't know, maybe five grand in the lifespan of ten years. Why not? Listen. Like the brake pedal is not the best in the world because of this energy regeneration thing going on in the front rotors, but I got used to it after a couple of days, so no big complaints there. To be honest with you, I'm driving a hybrid, but I'm driving a sexy hybrid. That's what I know. This car looks good. I get looks. People look at me. My wife was driving in it the other day. Everybody was whistling. There, it's a hot car. Nothing to be ashamed of. Now, residual value, I think this car will do quite well. A, because it's hot. B, because it's a good car. Another thing that, of course, I have to mention is the excellent warranty by Hyundai. Five years or 160,000 kilometers bumper to bumper warranty. That's really good stuff. So overall, if you're looking for a family sedan, well-equipped, well-priced, with good performance and exceptional fuel economy for the performance, you really need to consider this car. Plus, having the advantage of driving in the HOV lanes and stuff like that, and if you go to Ikea, you can park first class. I would really consider this car. One thing I would like to tell you is that I feel kind of proud for Hyundai because what they've done, like they used to build very cheap cars that were okay, but they were really affordable. So that was like the hot point, like the, the selling point of the cars. Today, they really make really good quality cars. They're not like exclusive vehicles. They're not meant to compete with like the really like upscale vehicles, but for what you pay, you get a lot of car and that's really good.